Welcome back to Words of Life. I'm Bernie Dake. I'm Stephen Nolan. And Stephen's joining us again this week because this series was really born out of your heart and desire to dive into this topic. Yeah, as we were reviewing upcoming series and we were trying to think what what would be next, um, I kept getting this thought about what does everyday leadership look like? And uh, so we, we discussed with Major John Murphy how could we work together on this? And we just loved his ideas. Absolutely. And so this week we dive back into the series on leadership with John Murphy and Bethany Farrell as they discuss power when it comes to leadership. So obviously in a corporate world, we all have this image in our head of what a boss looks like. It's this person that has power over the employee and wields it like that. Mm. But this week, Major John Murphy discusses what it looks like to be a little bit different and what it means for a leader to share power. Yeah, he's been very consistent as a leader and I'm grateful for his perspective. As a leader myself, I find it most rewarding when I empower the people around me and watch them succeed. And at that point, everybody wins. Well, I'm just excited to be back here with you for another yeah. edition of Everyday Leadership so, with the Major John Murphy. Oh, no, don't say it that way. It's always good to see you. It's good always to see good you, to see you see too. You. So uh, if you don't mind, I've seen that you've put here the passage that you're going to be working off of today. Yeah. Can I read that We're going to start loud? there, please. I really like this passage. Um, it's found from the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 42, and you used the message version, mm -hmm. which speaks so clearly to us. Here's what it says. Jesus got them together to settle things down. You've observed how godless rulers throw their weight around, he said. And when people get a little power, how quickly it goes to their heads. It's not going to be that way with you. I like how he states that. It's not going to be that way right. with you, right? So what comes to mind when we say power in the concept of leadership? Power, like if somebody has power? Yeah. Uh, to me, if somebody has power, that means that they have the ability to make things better or worse for somebody mm, else. Yeah. Ability is included in that for sure. And it's always focused a direction, right? Anything else? They have, um, they make the decisions mm. for the other people. Okay. Not necessarily the people don't necessarily have a say in it, <laughs> right? Okay. You just have to go with the flow of power sometimes. Uh -huh. um, and the decisions that are made from a place of power greatly influence and affect the lives and the livelihood of the people beneath them. Yeah, very in good. In some instances, I guess in other instances, it's not that great, but. I like what you say. You said um, the flow of power. Mm. I like thinking that way about power, that, that it is moving right? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be moving. And we'll get to that in just a minute. A very good definition for power. Here we go. Okay. Power is, like you said, the ability to influence the behaviors of others mm. with or without resistance. Sometimes there is resistance. Yeah. Sometimes there's not. Power is able to overcome that resistance. And power uses a variety of tactics to push or to prompt action. Right? All of that is contained in what power in leadership looks like. There is movement, there is influence, um, there is a, a pushing or a prompting, and sometimes there's opposition, but if you have leadership power, you're able to overcome that opposition to actually move toward a specific action. Mm. I think we could shorten it and say power is the ability to get things done, yeah. right? That's a good definition for it. Power is the ability to get things done. Can I interject real quick? because this, this whole series is on everyday leadership. And I think sometimes when we talk about leadership and things like power, what comes to our mind is political and you think big governmental things yeah. and people rising up and these big forms of power uh, or even the big corporations. But reading this very clearly, I see even something like me with my daughter, mm -hmm. right? My two-year-old, and I am trying to get her to put on her shoes and I'm trying to assert my power so we can get out the door and she is fighting me back <laughs> with a vengeance, right? So right. even though these words make everything sound like it's uh, maybe on a grander scale, this is something that I'm relating to 
in my life from either motherhood or where I work in mm-hmm. my job to anywhere in between. When we have these conversations, especially we could say in an organization like ours, the Salvation Army, our mind immediately goes to what is the the chain, right? Mm-hmm. Is there a captain? Well, he's responsible to a, a major. A position is responsible to another position. Who holds the ultimate power? Well, the one at the top of the pyramid. That's the one that has all the power. We tend to think it think of power in a a hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. And look at high level leaders as having the most amount of power. But power extends far beyond those um, formal authorities, right? Far beyond that. And as you said, all of us, when we view power as the ability to get things done, um, it relates to all of us. All of us have power. How do we wield it? That's That's correct. Right. So what what does power look like? What are different forms of power? Let's let's look at, uh, I think we have four of the, the classic examples. So there is legitimate power. That's the title of it. Okay, legitimate power. That's power that's derived from positions or titles. Um, both of you have, both of us have positions. Both of us have titles, right? And there is an amount of power associated with that position or with that title. Okay. So there is power in that. Legitimate power. Le- that's the title of it, right? There is referent power. Um, that's a little unique. We don't think about this often, this often, but that's solely based on an individual's ability to attract other people, mm-hmm. right? To build consensus in other people, to attract them toward their ideas, build their loyalty, and once loyalty is there, they're able to move forward. That's right. what people call the natural leaders, right? Some of those are, yeah. And right. we know those people, yeah. right? When you're around them, automatically you're like, yes, yeah. I agree. Let's do this. Rally. They're yeah. individuals just like that. Right. Um, I don't think I'm one of those. There are those that have expert power. They have specific knowledge or skills that other may not have, mm. um, like – our IT department. Yes. I will say that personally <laughs> because I have no idea what goes on inside those machines. I just know when something goes wrong, I have no ability to affect that situation. I call somebody, they have the power to fix whatever is going on. Yes. Okay. So there is expert power. We've experienced that in our home. If there's ever a plumbing issue, right? you can charge me a thousand dollars to <laughs> fix a screw because I don't know the difference, but you are the expert and I trust you. I have to trust you. I can see that because you're talking about screws in plumbing, and usually we don't associate those two things together. <laughs> like I said, I don't understand it. Um, lastly is informational power, right? Okay. Um, uh, we'll talk about this a little later, but the majority of us at one time or another have access to facts or knowledge that others may find useful. That's the knowledge power, okay. informational power. The people in the know. Exactly. You know, Bethany, there's also a, a couple of different views people have on power, right? Some people view power as currency, mm. as money, right? Just mm. think about that. Power as currency. It's held by few. Yeah. Once it's gained, it's guarded, sometimes guarded very jealously. And those that have susp- substantial stores of it, they actually have the ability to control because they can spend it how they want to spend it. They could utilize the power they have how they want to utilize it. Therefore, they have control. It's closed, it's inaccessible, and it's driven by the leader. Power is exerted by the leader. That feels yucky. <laughs> There's nothing about that that feels good. Maybe I was very harsh in the way I explained that. Perhaps that's my fault. But that's power as a currency, yeah. right? Or you can view it like a current. It's made by many. Mm-hmm. It's open. It's peer-driven. Participatory. There you go. Yeah. Uh, power this way is is most forceful when it surges, right? Not when it's constrained, but when it's active, when it's moving. The channels are open. Exactly. The yeah. goal of this power is not to hoard it, but to channel it, right? That feels... Am I right in saying that that one is... That's what we're trying to focus on? That feels like a much more... Um, holy and honoring sense of power as opposed to the idea of power just belongs to me and I have to wield it wisely. Yeah, I think so. And, and that 
understanding of a, a zero sum comes into this as well. Those that see power as currency see power as a zero sum game, right? Meaning that if I have more power, you have less. If I give you some of my power, then my power diminishes. There's mm-hmm. winners and losers. Therefore, I have to hold it, right. monitor it, hoard it in some cases, and I'm the one that decides where it is exerted. Mm-hmm. Right? I think the problem with that is that understanding of power as currency leads us to an organization, a relationship where it's us and them. It's very much one-sided. You versus me, Yeah. right? Where if we look at power as a current, as a force that we're directing or guiding, it's all about us. It's we, Mm -hmm. right? It's not you or me, it's us. We are in this. We are trying to affect change for the glory of the kingdom, and we're using the resources that we have, my resources, your resources, my power, your power collectively, or I'm even giving you some of my power, my ability, my information, a skill that I understand so that the kingdom benefits. It's not you and I, us and them, it's us, it's we. This model makes all the other forms of power that you were talking about make more sense. They all have a place in that power. Of course. You can all share the power that you have in a power, (laughs) you can all share the power that you have in a way that benefits the greater community instead of just giving a little bit here and there as it right. serves you. Right. It's something that's going to serve the whole people. Yeah, those forms of power are negative, yeah. right? In a, in a family, right? Yes. In an organization, there is legitimate power, there's expert power, there's informational, all those are legitimate. The question comes, how are we going to utilize them for the benefit of the kingdom? And we can't be those that feel we have to hoard and have to protect and maintain the power. Or stifle other people's power. Yes, because it's not a zero-sum game. Right. I don't lose when you win. I don't have less power when I share power with you. That's beautiful. Well, where does that take us? What's our, are we ready for our takeaway? Yeah, let's do today's action. What are we gonna do? Um, Let's consider the power that we may have. Maybe it's today. What power do we have today? Let me give the example of um, informational power, because that may be one that that a lot of people can say, today I understand that. Um, Be generous. Obviously, we're not talking about, um, um, we're not talking about sharing confidential information. Sure. But if we have information that we feel would be beneficial to someone else, let's not hoard it, let's share it. Let's bring them into the knowledge that we have, in this case, bring them into the power that we hold. Mm 